Oh, the delightful dance of diplomacy and disaster in the South China Sea. Just another day in paradise, where Beijing and its best buddy, the Philippines, engage in a not-so-friendly game of chicken. These simmering tensions could erupt into a full-blown regional drama if mishandled. And who doesn't love a good geopolitical soap opera? We've been keeping a hawk-eyed watch on these unfolding theatrics since last week's ship-bumping incident. Recently, the Philippines, ever the peacemaker, suggested a touch of diplomacy to smooth over these maritime mishaps. Meanwhile, the is e The US, along with a posse of other nations, threw their support behind the Philippines. Naturally, this made Beijing's blood boil. In a fit of righteous indignation, a spokesperson from the Chinese embassy in the Philippines delivered a statement dripping with sarcasm. If they truly care about peace and stability in the South China Sea, why do they keep stirring the pot and cranking up the tension? Oh, the irony. The mutual distrust level is quite low, yet the brief detente that emerged earlier remains as delicate as a soap bubble. The interaction along the shorelines, well, that's going to persist. If the Philippines attempts a long-term stake on the reef by stranding warships there, China will respond with tougher measures at sea. In such a scenario, an escalated confrontation is not off the table. Let's emphasize this once more. What makes this hotspot particularly perilous is Beijing's unwavering belief in its superior claim over the entire region. Never mind the global consensus, which leans more towards the Philippines. Beijing isn't just spouting rhetoric for kicks. It genuinely believes this territory is its own sovereign domain and that it's being bullied by others. Well, isn't it just delightful how you can twist the numbers and make a case that they'll soon plateau at a mere $1.5 million per quarter or a modest $6 million annually? Real estate investment, that once glittering beacon of prosperity, appears to be in no rush to bounce back. It's like watching paint dry, really. Despite the plummet in new project initiations, the drop in investment is comparatively a gentle tumble. So where does that leave us? With the cyclical boost from investment she, e, to economic growth, either hanging by a thread in manufacturing or simply vanishing into thin air from a distance. It looks like many of China's capital heavy manufacturing sectors are struggling to squeeze out a profit after their recent overzealous expansion. It's almost as if they forgot that too much of a good thing can sometimes be, well, not so good. I suspect, though I'm not an oracle, that eventually they'll pivot back to doling out cash for infrastructure projects. The most celebrated economists, bless their hearts, appear blissfully ignorant of the dangers lurking in over-reliance on foreign demand. Yet, Few have the guts to stand up and advocate for a more measured, sustainable growth trajectory. End quote. Now, brace yourselves. We've got another juicy development to dive into. But first, let's pause for a moment. If you're finding today's episode mildly entertaining, don't forget to smash that like button. Liking, sharing and subscribing sends a signal to the almighty algorithm to grace new folks with this content. Poor China Update has been ghosted by the algorithm for about a month now. Oh, the infamous Belt and Road Initiative, where China has generously doled out over a trillion dollars in loans and grants for international infrastructure projects. It's Beijing's not-so-subtle way of crafting economic and diplomatic connections with other nations, all while conveniently securing construction gigs for its own state-run enterprises. This grand plan has seen a few triumphs, some lukewarm outcomes, and a mountain of criticism for outrageously expensive and shoddy construction that leaves borrowing countries drowning in debt. Just last Friday, Boise, I, sorry, sorry, I, Nepal's Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister optimistically expressed hope that China might just wipe away those hundreds of millions in debt. How generous of them! 
Well, isn't it just delightful that a communist might believe debts can be settled with nothing more than wishful thinking? If, by some miracle, these dreams don't quite cover the bill, the less fortunate are slated to begin coughing up the cash in 2026. But wait, there's more to this tangled web of financial wizardry. Binoj Bastiat, who once wore the hat of a Nepali general and now dabbles in research at Rangsit University in Thailand, spilled the beans to the New York Times. He suggested that China might just wave its magic wand and transform this loan into a grant. Why? Because they're eager to cozy up with Nepal's Communist Party. And here's the kicker. There's another juicy perk for China if they decide to play the generous benefactor. Quote, The investigation into the corruption charges will quickly come to an end. Nobody will talk about that anymore. End quote. Ah, the sweet scent of political amnesia, where scandals vanish quicker than Houdini's best tricks. And let's not forget the delightful geopolitical circus playing out on the global stage. Just last week, Nepal's shiny new foreign minister, Deba, made a grand appearance in India for a series of high-profile powwows, even managing to snag an audience with India's own Prime Minister, Modi. This diplomatic dance unfolds as Nepal ushers in a fresh government, a coalition under the watchful eye of Prime Minister Oli. Now, Oli's no stranger to controversy. He's been known to cozy up to China, much to India's chagrin. Once upon a time, he even inked a landmark deal with Beijing, aiming to cut Nepal's reliance on Indian trade routes. Ah, the tangled web of international relations, where allegiances shift like sand in the wind. As Mohammed Zaishan, a commentator from The Diplomat, astutely observed over the weekend, Nepal holds significant importance not only for India, but also for the United States. Tucked away between the giants of India and China in those strategically disputed Himalayas, Nepal emerges as a crucial player in counterbalancing China's influence in South Asia. He remarked, Like other South Asian economies, Nepal perceives economic connections with China as a potential escape from New Delhi's long-standing dominance. Yet, while Nepal shifts its gaze toward China, the United States hasn't exactly been twiddling its thumbs. In recent years, Washington has made concerted efforts to establish its own foothold in Nepal. 